the day before, the day I got wounded, we was mopping up, and the Japs, people, some of them never seen a Jap on that island. I saw several of them. I was with Hatch, he had that 03 rifle, and we could see the water, and they'd gather up down there. Of course, I was in a position that I was laying right up there beside him. We had three caves that they was coming in and out of. Not a whole flock of them, just one here, one there. So I'd tell him, there's one. And he, it takes a while to get on with that scope. And he didn't know. He said, where, where? So we had numbered them caves, one, two, and three. So when I'd see one, it, you couldn't see them once they get back in that shadow, but once they'd come out just a little bit, he had that rifle, had her all zeroed in. I'd say, there's one at number two. Well, take a little bit, he gets sighted in. That'd be the end of that guy. And they, they kept coming out to look, see where it was. Um, we done that half a day that day. And then we got called down to go to another place and uh, fooled around there. And before we left that position, the sergeant told me when I went up there, he said, I don't fire that damn thing unless you have to, because there was enough of them left that they had them Name, name orders they called them. Anyway, so uh, just before I left, I look. Well, I was looking down right at light at twelve o'clock, right down the middle there. Well, I when I got ready to leave, I looked over about one o'clock or so, and a, a jap come in, ducked down just that quick, got in a got in a, in a cave that looked like I'd never been touched because he just went down some steps. I thought, thank God, I wish I could see him in time. So I'm still watching that opening. Here come three guys up the steps. Got up there and just stood like he was in town. And that's the last time I fired my rifle because come on down, we're leaving. And I got down there and that's when I got wounded. Got wounded, Huff said, go up and see if we can find a place to stay on to hold it tonight. Well, that's where I went. I got up there, went up so far, and he hollered at me, and uh, I wanted to talk about the, if they ever got that tank up there to help us. And I, I sat down and put that BAR between my legs, and... Uh, Turned around, was talking to him, had that leg out, I guess, and I've got a machine gun bullet, two of them in the leg, and one through the hand. I don't know what happened to that BR, just snatched it out of my hand. <laughs> but that's how I got wounded. And they just, of course, knocked me off that rock, or I got off that big rock. And I knew where I was at and everything. So I could hear them boys talking. Said, well, go get him, we go get him. I, I, I said, no, I can make it back. I can get back. And I was tumbling back. And I could, after I went so far, kind of went down a little bit. And that machine gun couldn't see me after I got down here. But till I got down there, he was farming at, at me all the way back. I was just lucky I made it back. And when I got back there, I just rolled all the way back to, to where the corpsman and Huff was. We'd got a new corpsman. And... They was in a little recess there, and they reached out and pulled me in. And uh, that Corbin, when I had that hand up, I thought he blowed my hand off. It's so much, much of it to pieces. And uh, so... Can, that, you, can you show the camera? The hand? If you just put it up a little bit. Went through this here, and it came out on this side here. Can't, it, it, it can't move it, any, it just drops down. Like, but I can still use my fingers and so forth pretty well. And I, you know, I've done a lot of things with it. But like I say, damn near shot it all. And he broke his leg. And I was rolling back. 
Every time I looked down, I'd see that bone sticking out if I rolled again. So when they pulled me in, I had to straighten that leg out. So they went to work on my hand dressing that. That corpsman was, he was new to me. I had, and uh, so I uh, looked at that and uh, I said, well, my leg's broke. No, hell, hell, it ain't broke. I said, yes, my leg's broke. So they moved around a while. I said, you're going to fix my leg? So they finally took the knife and cut my dungarees off. I said, said, hell, you're lucky. said, it just went in and went out. <laughs> There's two holes there. I broke my leg. So finally, when they moved me, they seen the leg, it broke. So they uh, had got a stretcher. It was uh, our operation. They was driving Jeeps up there and everything. So uh, they brought a stretcher down there and got me on, or not a stretcher, yeah, a huge stretcher, cast there, got me out of there and hauled me back to the hospital on a Jeep. On a, Top, you know, they had two other there. I had to wait up there quite a while. There's one stomach wounds on a Marine up there. And they was, took a long time to get him stabilized. So I went down to the hospital and uh, just sat stretcher and all on a cot. And there I sat all night, laid there all night. And uh, they'd come back to check a hand, see if. I wasn't bleeding and so forth. And uh, so I was there that night and the next day, maybe, I don't know, just remember, at least a day and a night before they operate, they was busy. And of course, I was classed as not being serious, you know, fatal. So when I, they started to take me to the hospital, they had me on that stretcher and on the way to inside the hospital. Somebody gave me that shot. That meant this. I can't pronounce it. Anyway, just went to sleep, I guess. When I come out of there, I was in a body cast. They didn't put a rod down your leg like that. And of course, that was all shattered there. I had a cast down on my knee to here. On this injured leg, cleared to, I could just see my toes. Maybe the heel was out. And there I was in that body cast. Because you got that femur broke, you can't twist your hips. See, you just keep moving that one bone there. So that's what I stayed in then for uh, a while. And uh, got a plane in there. I hauled everybody out. And I got on that plane. They flew me to Guam in that body cast. I was there eight days, I think. They gave me a shot or two of blood. And then I went to Pearl Harbor, and I stayed in that cast for a while. And But then I, they cut that cast off and put me in a traction bed. You know, see, now that weight over it. And that was pretty comfortable. You could move around. But now it's a job using that bedpan when you're wearing a body cast. That's... Terrible. <laughs> How would you do it? <laughs> How? You just got up there. You, it kind of a mess, but you had to do it some way. And the nurses, all in that ward back then, at Pearl Harbor, I.E. Heights, they called it, all down that ward was either amputees or, or legs. It was all legs and that. And they was having them Navy guys come in there then from them ships. And I don't know why, but their feet was shattered, injured, and that heel or toes would start turning black. They'd be going up there, start turning black, and they'd tell them, now we're going to, when it got so bad, now we're going to take you down to the hospital uh, Wednesday, they'll say, and they just, leg after leg, just cut off there. I was awful to see that. And here it was all healthy but them feet and stuff. In fact, they was riding around wheelchairs, some of them.